In this video, I'm going to discuss tips and tricks that I have learned for getting a great night's sleep when camping and backpacking. If you would like to see the first part of this series, which concerns the gear that you'll need to build your own camping or backpacking sleep system, then I will leave a link in the video description to that video. The most important tip that I can give you when trying to get a good night's sleep with camping and backpacking is to choose the correct campsite. If you pick a campsite that is really good, then your sleep system is not going to have to work hard at all to make sure that you get that good night's sleep. Tip number one when picking a campsite is try to avoid low-lying areas, such as right next to rivers. The cold air settles into those depressions and those campsites can be really cold. Tip number two is try to avoid any very hard campsites. So don't camp somewhere where the ground has become as compacted as cement, because that is going to be a very uncomfortable surface to try and sleep on. And the last tip that I have, tip number three, is to try and choose a campsite that is fairly flat. Not only not sloping, but also somewhere that doesn't have a whole lot of rocks that are going to be sticking into your hips and back when you're trying to get a good night's sleep. As always, you should always practice good leave no trace principles when you're choosing a campsite. Now we have decided that this is our campsite and we're going to set up our tent. But wait. If you are expecting really cold weather, you might want to first put down your emergency space blanket as a footprint for your tent. It's such a thin little piece of reflective material, but it can actually make quite a big difference to the warmth of the tent. The next thing you're going to want to do once you've set up your tent is lay out your sleeping bag and your sleeping pad as soon as possible. This allows your sleeping mat to get completely flat, particularly if you're using a foam sleeping mat that's been rolled up. This can be quite useful. And more importantly, it allows your sleeping bag time to loft. Even if you have a synthetic sleeping bag, this is important. A trick that I have learned that is specific to air inflatable sleeping mats is to not over inflate them. It's actually pretty easy to make them just as hard as a rock and that doesn't actually provide a very comfortable night's sleep. So try letting just a little bit of air out of your pad. You want there to be some give when you lie on it. Hygiene is not something that is often associated with backpacking and camping, but I would really recommend trying to get clean before you crawl inside your sleeping bag. Not only is this going to prolong the life of your sleeping bag, but it's also going to help you get warmer. If you are still in your sweaty hiking clothes, those clothes are probably a bit damp and that's going to keep you really cold. By getting clean, taking off those dirty clothes and putting on a set of clean, dedicated sleeping clothes, you're going to stay a lot warmer. And on the subject of sleeping clothes, I would recommend, if possible, to wear some sort of moisture wicking material, just because if you do overheat in your sleeping bag and start to sweat and you're wearing cotton, that can make you really cold. Having said that, I have taken cotton sleep clothes with me on many hikes and I'm just very careful to make sure that they do not get wet whether with water or with sweat and it's worked completely fine for me. One thing that is really important with your sleeping clothes is to make sure that they are very comfortable. Don't get clothes that are too tight because as soon as they're too tight and restricting your circulation you're also going to struggle to warm up particularly in your extremities. When you're really cold, it can be very tempting to layer up as much as possible and then jump into your sleeping bag, which is completely fine. You should get warm as soon as you can. But remember to take those layers off again once you are warm because you don't want to start sweating inside of your sleeping bag. It's going to make your sleep clothes wet, which is going to make you cold. And when it starts making the sleeping bag itself damp, the sleeping bag is going to become a lot less efficient at insulating you. It's important to remember that sleeping bags are insulating devices. They do not give off heat. All they are doing is trapping the heat that you produce. So it is very important to make sure that you have enough food and water so that you can actually keep your metabolism up and produce that heat to keep yourself warm. Eating or drinking some sort of sugary snack is often a good idea, provided that you can still sleep after that. 
And you can even try doing some exercises. Something that I like to do when I'm really cold is to go into my sleeping bag, remove all of my clothes while I'm in the sleeping bag, and then put them all back on, also while I'm still in the sleeping bag. This is actually quite a workout and a bit of a struggle, and just that movement generates quite a bit of heat. There is nothing worse than getting into your sleeping bag, getting all lovely and toasty warm, and then realizing that you really have to go to the bathroom. Make sure that you go to the bathroom multiple times before you settle down for the night. And on that note, make sure that you have any sort of gear that you need to go to the toilet at hand so that if you do have to get up in the middle of the night, your headlamp, your trowel, your toilet paper and your hand sanitizer is nearby. If you are a taller person or if there is more than one person sharing the tent, it can pretty easily happen that the foot of your sleeping bag touches the wall of the tent and gets condensation on it. If this is something that is happening to you, you can use your rain gear or your pack liner just to create a bit of a barrier between your sleeping bag and the tent wall. All of the lovely heat that you are producing to keep yourself warm doesn't mean anything if it's escaping the sleeping bag. So make sure that you cinch the sleeping bag down. If it's got a cowl, then cinch it down around your face. And if it just comes up to your shoulders, cinch it around your neck to make sure that you limit the air loss as much as possible. When I first started using a sleeping bag that had a cowl, I was very tempted to put my entire head inside of the sleeping bag when I was cold. And of course my breath was all lovely and warm and steamy and that would heat up the inside of the sleeping bag. But your breath also contains a lot of moisture. And as we have discussed before, as soon as your sleeping bag gets moisture in it, it becomes a lot less effective at insulating. So don't put your mouth and nose inside of your sleeping bag. You can quite easily cinch the cowl of your sleeping bag down to over your eyes. And if your mouth and nose are still cold, use a buff or a scarf to lift up over your mouth and nose while you're sleeping rather than putting them inside the sleeping bag. If your sleeping bag does not have a cowl, then just take a beanie or some type of buff or warm headgear with you to put over your head to keep it warm. You can even use a buff as an eye mask. If you are a short person like I am, then most sleeping bags are going to be far too long for you. And I also find that my feet get cold really easily. How I've gotten around this is by inverting the toe box of my sleeping bag. So I pull the toe box into the sleeping bag itself and that creates additional insulation around my feet. Another good way of dealing with too much air being around you in the sleeping bag is to put extra clothing or soft gear items in the sleeping bag with you. And remember, if you are really, really cold, then there is no shame in sharing your sleeping bag with another person as well. In really cold weather where you're struggling to generate enough heat, a very good trick that you can use is making a hot water bottle. If you have some sort of bottle that can carry hot water, such as a Nalgene bottle, you can boil water, fill up your Nalgene bottle and put that in the sleeping bag with you. You can also use disposable hand or foot warmers, which are chemical pads that heat up when exposed to air, or you can even use re reusable heat packs that have a little coin inside them that you snap and then the whole pack heats up. If you are using a pillow and you find that the pillow keeps slipping off of your sleeping pad, then try putting a t-shirt over both the pillow and the sleeping bag to hold it in place. Hopefully with all of these tips, you can get a good night's sleep and wake up well rested the next morning. If you have your own tips and tricks for getting a good night's sleep while backpacking or camping, then please leave them in the comments below because I am so excited to learn new things as well.